Welcome everyone to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. Today we are going to be talking some NFL draft that's still happening at the time of recording. We're going to be talking about all the big free agency moves that have happened since we've been away. We're going to talk about Tom Brady coming back and we're just going to get you up to date on what's going on in the NFL so that you can get ready for preseason, training camp, hard knocks, all of that. So we have the NFL expert, the producer, Mr. Justin Ackendale with us. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, brother. It's one of the um, major days in the um, NFL this weekend. NFL draft. They're coming for everything, man. It's crazy. It's now become a spectacle. Uh, Thursday nights, typically around 8 o'clock. It's in Vegas right now. There's 500,000 people. It was in Cleveland a year before. It's a real thing, man. It takes over the sports world. Anytime the NFL does anything, they... They take it over. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy. They literally like I was watching it today and they were having a concert there like Ice Cube was there. Someone got married today on the during the draft seventh round. They came to the stage and got married. Wow. Now they can tell their friends and family. I got married at the NFL draft. So that's insane. (laughs) That's wild. (laughs) It is wild. I was watching it, too. I was like, oh, this is really happening. But let's get into the draft. We're going to be talking about some of. The first round that happened on Thursday night, the top couple of picks, some surprises that you saw, some people dropping, some people going up, and we're going to get right into that. So, Justin, man, the Jacksonville Jaguars were on the clock. They had the first pick in the draft, and they took Walker out of Georgia. Did you like that pick? There was talk between him and Aiden. Like, what did you see in that? I mean... I don't think you can really go wrong with either um, prospect, Trayvon Walker or um, Aiden Hudson. I know that um, Trayvon Walker tested really well, like his 40 and like short cone were like super good, which is why he like shot up there. They're essentially saying that he's probably going to be a better athlete, have the better upside than Aiden Hudson. But I watch a lot of Big Ten football and I watch a lot of SEC football and um, Aiden Hudson was running shit in the Big Ten. I mean, he was everywhere. He had a great game against Ohio State, so you really can't go wrong with either pick. I think it works out great for both teams. I mean, Trayvon Walker can stay in the South. Aiden Hudson got um, drafted by Detroit. He's a Michigan kid, so I think it works out um, perfect for both teams, honestly. Yeah, Aiden doesn't even have to really change his location of driving. He's still in the same state, so that worked out really well for him. But Justin, I was just noticing, too, when we get down to picks three four, and five. The first five picks were all defensive players. I don't remember the last time that's happened. It's usually been quarterbacks, and there was no quarterbacks in the top five picks this year. Well, the whole thing about this draft was um, it was going to be um, there weren't really any quarterbacks. There weren't really any first-round quarterbacks. I mean, only one quarterback went in the first round this year. So, yeah, it was a pretty much a defensive draft corners d linemen um a couple of offensive linemen but yeah the first um five picks were all defensive and number four coming from your school sauce gartner cb from cincinnati that has to make you feel good as an alum yeah it definitely makes me feel good i mean the guy was totally unstoppable like shut out anyone that he played against i think he the most yards he ever gave up against anyone was like 13 yards i heard them say on the draft so totally shut down the jets like they had a really good draft they had a really good first round i know they um they ended up getting um who they ended up getting later they got garrett wilson later with the number 10 pick and i know later on in the first round they traded back up in to get um jermaine jermaine johnson from florida state he was um on last chance you and he was expected to be a top 15 pick i don't know why he um fell all the way down to 25 but jets had three first round picks and they got three good players with all those um, first round picks. Speaking of Garrett Wilson, it came to a surprise to a a lot of people, especially me. Drake London was the first wide receiver taken. No one was talking about this guy. Do you know anything about him? Why was, why did Atlanta go him instead of one of the Buckeye receivers? They probably just wanted a bigger body. I suppose Drake, Drake London's a six, four, a six, four um, kid. There in the draft, they said that um, his comp was like um, Vincent Jackson, old Tampa Bay receiver, big possession receiver. So I guess he just wants someone more along that elk of a bigger receiver. But I didn't watch too much USC, so I can't really tell you how good he was. I did watch a lot of Ohio State, and I know 
Garrett Wilson is a burner. Like, quick gets out of breaks good, deep ball threat, so. Yeah, and the league watched a lot of Ohio State, too, because once you got to pick 10, 11, and we will count 12 because he did start at Ohio State before leaving, three Buckeye receivers were picked back to back to back. Obviously, Jameson Williams finished his career at Alabama, but he was in that Buckeye receiving room. There's pictures of all three of them being on the field, but Jameson left to go to Alabama because Marvin Harrison Jr. came to Ohio State, and the number one, early number one potential pick next year, who's better than all of them, Jackson Jackson Smith and Jigba, is there currently at Ohio State, but Three straight Buckeyes, basically. Wide receiver picks, man. What did you think when you saw that? Yeah, I was, um, in, one, in our group matches, I was talking to, um, one of our supporters, Patrick, and I was like, I, think, I was asking him, he's a Green Bay Packers fan, I'm like, you think, um, you think the Packers going to be able to get, um, Chris Olave? And then, like, right after I sent the text, I, like, started looking at the order, team started trading up, I'm like, oh, shit, the Packers are, like, at 23? He ain't going to stay that long. And right, just like you said, it was Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Jameson Williams. And then after the Saints traded up to get Chris Olave, I texted Patrick. I was like, "Hey, man, ho- hopefully the whole league's sleeping. Maybe um, Green Bay can um, luck in and Jameson Williams." And then the Detroit Lions trade up to snatch him back, to snatch him in the vision. So, yeah, I mean, all three great players. I mean. I don't know who's the best out of them. I mean, I mean, I think um, Jameson Williams had the best season last year, but they were all on the same team, and Jameson Williams, Jameson Williams left, so they're just all three great receivers, and they're all going to do well in the league. Yeah, it's funny seeing uh, Olave and Wilson get drafted before Jameson because you were on the Buckeye College podcast months ago where you heard us and – Byron just really going to town how none of the Buckeyes were in the final three for the Beliftikoff award for the best receiver. <laughs> so nope. that was, that's very uh, interesting. And just like the Saints, since we're staying on Captain Byron, now they have Michael Thomas on one end, Chris Olave on the other end, Alvin Kamara in the backfield, Taysom Hill back doing his tight end stuff, and Jameis, they're looking pretty good. Yeah, I know the Saints are going to... Um, I know Alvin Kamara is going to get suspended for at least a couple games. He got arrested over the offseason, so I know I know that we still have to see how Michael Thomas comes back because he, he didn't play a single snap all of last year, right? correct? So, yeah, if, if uh, Michael Thomas can come back and um, be the Michael Thomas he was um, two seasons ago, yeah, he'll definitely... Uh, the Saints will definitely be in contention to get a wild card spot in the NFC because the NFC is it's very quarterback draft if you ask me with um some of the free agent um things that have happened over offseason so yeah the Saints could definitely um vie for um wild card spot in the um, NFC and then speaking of the NFC too and the Big Ten too Dotson from Penn State who's also a really good receiver he was drafted 16th to Washington and then Traylon Burks was a wide receiver who got drafted to Tennessee, but it's not the NFL draft without some trades you didn't expect. Two wide receivers established got traded. AJ Brown gets traded and Hollywood Brown get traded. Justin, were you expecting that and the teams that they went to? What did you think when you saw those trades? I was definitely surprised that um AJ Brown got um shipped out of um Tennessee. Like that was that was honestly crazy. I know he's um he's in the final year of his um rookie um deal, so I know he's going to want more money. The Titans ended up draft, drafting Malik Willis today. No, actually, it was um yesterday at the time of recording in the um third round, I believe. So yeah, they definitely have they're definitely going younger at quarterback. I know they paid um Ryan Tannehill. I know they paid um Derrick Henry. The Titans are basically saying we don't have enough money for you, AJ Brown. We don't got enough money to keep up to keep up with the Joneses and give you twenty five, thirty million that some of these guys are getting. So we're going to trade you to um, Philly and then draft your replacement with our um, first round pick. And with Philly too now, in your favorite team in the NFC East with the Cowboys, now they got Devontae Smith, AJ, um, AJ Brown, 
it's they're investing in Jalen Hurts. Like they're saying, we are giving you the ball. Like we're giving you all the tools and weapons. You got to make it happen now. Yeah, Jalen Hurts, and like a, and like it's going to be a theme. The NFC wild card race is totally up for grabs. So they can they're definitely going to be in the hunt for it with some of the picks they made. I know they drafted um Jordan Davis, a big um defensive tackle from Georgia in the um first round. So getting the defense right. Yeah, the Eagles are um if Jalen Hurts can make a big leap that they'll they'll be able to um do some things in the NFC East. And then Holly, Hollywood Brown gets traded to Arizona and Lamar Jackson was tweeting when it came out. He was saying WTF. So obviously he was not he did not know anything about this trade happening, seeing his response. And he gets to link back up with Kyler Murray, who tweeted saying, Let's go. We're all in this now. The same Kyler Murray who this whole offseason, is he going to get traded? Are they going to give him his money? He's trying to get his money two years early when he truly hasn't proved that he deserves that money early. <laughs> if we're being honest, he's made us look stupid because at the beginning of the season, he'll start really well. And then near the end, he just fizzles out and dies in the playoffs. So what did you think about Baltimore just getting rid of Hollywood Brown? Yeah, this is definitely, um, you no. Know, Hollywood Brown was a very productive receiver for them. He had like over 90 catches for them. So it was definitely odd, but um, I mean, I know they um, drafted a rookie receiver last year, Rashad Bateman, and he started to um, catch on during the end of the season. You got to remember, the Ravens had like over like 15 guys on yep. the IR last year. So they, they had a lot of people not there. They're going to have um, oh, J.K. Dobbins coming back off injury, so their running game should be better next year. I'm not too worried about it. They have Mark Andrews there at tight end. They still have Lamar Jackson there running the ball, so I don't think the Ravens have really anything to um, be worried about. Their defense is still good. I just think they um, didn't want to pay him. Hollywood Brown if he was, um, I guess they just didn't want to pay him the way the, um, this receiver money is going. I don't know if you can't be not worried because now if you look at the AFC North, not all of you are getting out. You got Cincinnati, who just went to the Super Bowl. You got Pittsburgh, who Mike Tomlin just does not believe in losing seasons. You have Cleveland now with Deshaun Watson. Oh, God. I forgot about him. <laughs> so it's like, one of y'all are not making it out. One of you is going to not make the playoffs. So it's like an arms race. And you want to talk about the wild card in the NFC? The wild card in the AFC is going to be a bloodbath because you have those four teams in the AFC uh, North, and then you have the AFC West with the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Chargers, and the Raiders. Obviously, those four; those are eight teams. All of them are getting in. Then you got the Bills. You got the dude in New England who's named Bill Belichick. I, I mean, you could throw the Dolphins in there. They caught fire, but then we know the Brian Flores situation. They just effed that all up, but they made a big free agent <laughs> sign that we'll talk about. You could talk about the Colts. They made a free agent sign we'll talk about, too. Like, it's tough out there, man. Yeah, the AFC is a, is a beat grinder. Like, that's going to be that's going to be the conference to watch in the NFL next season. Any, like, CBS for um, 25 games is going to be where it's at Sundays in the fall because the AFC is going to be a bloodbath. I cannot wait for it. Oh, yeah, they'll have all AFC games except for the ones where they get the t- Cowboy ones. Like where they get the random cowboy games, except for when they're not on Fox. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying with how good all those teams are in the AFC, like those are going to be the highest rated games all next year. Those CBS late window games, easily. So speaking of one of the AFC North teams, the only team to take a quarterback in the first round, the Pittsburgh Steelers, staying at home with Kenny Pickett. A lot of people were a little confused because they just signed Mitch Trubisky. What did you see in that pick? Do you think Pickett has a chance of starting over Trubisky? Do you think they're going to just have them compete? What are you thinking? I think um, I think Mitch Trubisky can um, start over. Um, I mean, not Mitch Trubisky. I think Kenny Pickett can end up starting over. Um, yeah, I think Kenny Pickett can end up starting over Mitch Trubisky because um, Kenny Pickett was a um, four-year starter. Like, he was a senior. So, a bunch of games played, like, Big knock against him is um he has little hands, which which can be a problem because he plays in the um AFC North and like it gets cold in December up in those um those cities that 
that he's going to be playing in. So that does concern me a little bit, but yeah, I, I feel like they're going to compete out over the summer and let the best man win, but I think it'll end up being um, Kenny Pickett in the long run. Running joke in the NFL draft for the past 20 years, Packers don't draft any offensive weapons in the first round. They get two offensive, I mean, they get two first round picks this draft. They do not take an offensive weapon again in the first <laughs> round. They took two defensive player, uh Walker, the linebacker from Georgia. They actually got two people from Georgia, Walker and Wyatt. Both very good players, but not offensive weapons. What did you think about the Packers not doing that and also not making a move at that point in time? There's still months to go for Debo Samuels, who wants out. Yeah, I mean, the Packers, you know, they do what they do. They um, they follow their board to a T. They said, look, look, Aaron Rodgers, we're going to pay you all this money, but we're still not going to do whatever the fuck you want us to do because they got two defenders in the draft, but two Georgia defenders. So, like, I think they're end up going. I think they're going to end up being good. So, I think that's going to work out. And then um, they trade it up in the um, second round to end up getting the um, wide receiver from North Dakota State. So, I guess that was their plan all along. Like, as much shit that we give the Packers, like they do draft well. Like, their players that they end up drafting always turn out good. All their late round um, linemen that they end up drafting always end up um, developing, t- being starters. So. I, I'm not worried about what the Packers end up doing, but it is it is going to be um, interesting to see how um, Aaron Rodgers does with his lack of weapons this season because they really did not solve the um, issue in the draft. No, not at all. Justin, anything else on this first round in the NFL where we go to where the real meat and potatoes of this offseason was the free agency? Nah, man, that's all I got for the draft, honestly. And you've stated before the NFL draft is definitely not like the NBA draft, obviously, because you have seven rounds that you can find really good players in rounds three, four, and five in the NFL draft. I mean, most of the NFL is undrafted. That's all you need to know about the NFL draft and how they pick players as opposed to the NBA. Like, there will be players getting drafted today who will end up being stars. And, like, I do want to talk about the quarterbacks a little bit because um, Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati, he got drafted by... um. The Falcons in um, round three, I believe. And then Malik Willis got um, drafted by um, the Titans um, a couple picks later. I think that that is great for them. Like Desmond Ritter said Atlanta's going to get a Super Bowl out of him. I don't know if you saw that quote. I did not see that quote. But, like, that's good for them because, like, those aren't, like, bad franchises. Like, they're not bad franchises and they don't have to start right away. The, the, tight, shit, the Titans shit were just in the playoffs last year. Yeah, they were number one seed in the playoffs. Um, the Falcons have Arthur Smith. He was the old offensive coordinator in Tennessee, so he was the one who, um, I guess you can say, fixed Ryan Tannehill. So I just think those guys got put in great situations as opposed to being, you know, a top five pick, being a Trevor Lawrence that was um, stuck in Jack- Jacksonville last year, and you saw how that went. So, yeah, I really, I really like it for them. There was a whole bunch of issues with Jacksonville on – on that thing. But Justin, man, the real thing, like maybe because this draft felt lackluster for the common fan, is because free agency was wild. And I'm just going to say it Jacksonville messed it up for all the owners, all the GMs, because it all started with Christian Kirk and giving him all that freaking money. Four years, 72 million, Christian Kirk. Third receiver on the um, Cardinals. So when all these other wide receivers saw that, they were like, if the third best receiver on the Cardinals is getting 72 million, oh yeah, we gotta we gotta get this money. And then it just all went downhill with all of them, man. Craziest NFL offseason for a wide receiver, because there are so many changes. Allen Robinson going to the Rams. Let me let me tell you this that I uh, stole from um, ESPN. Six hundred and fifty million guaranteed on um wide receivers this um off season. Six hundred fifty million. It's never happened before. And then the NFL to um the counteract the counteract this six wide receivers drafted in the um top twenty. I think that's gonna be the, I think that's gonna be the new thing when your wide receivers are like, hey, I want more money. They're gonna be like, all right, we're just gonna trade you and draft a new one. 
That, yeah, that's what I'm saying because like the way that like college football is putting um new receivers into the league, like the wide receivers gonna end up being like the running back soon enough when when you can just um replace them with pretty much anyone. It's, the, it's not the fact that like they're coming in and they're being good like two years, three years down the road. They're coming in instantly and being good. Like that's the crazy thing about it. What wide receiver move do you think is going to have the biggest impact? Obviously, Devontae Adams, he's gone. He's not in Green Bay. He's in Oakland now. You got freaking Tyreek Hill in Miami. Now you have A.J. Brown with Philadelphia. What move do you think is going to be the biggest wide receiver move that's actually going to make an impact in the league? I would say, honestly, I think the A.J. Brown um, pickup is huge for the Eagles. Like, that is a great signing for them because they know they've been struggling for years to try to pick up the right receiver i know they drafted jalen rager a few years ago he didn't really work out i know they had alshon jeffrey and um nelson Aguilar um a few years back when they um won the super bowl so they've been they've been searching for a receiver help for a minute now and i think aj brown you gotta remember aj brown that game against the Bengals in the playoffs he went off like he had like I think it was like four catches for like over 150 yards. So like that man can definitely, that man can definitely play. Tyreek Hill going to Miami was shocking. I don't think it's going to be like, don't get me wrong. It's going to make the dolphins better, but like, I don't think Tua has the um, ability to really un- unlock Tyreek Hill the way that um, Patrick Mahomes does. So we're being completely honest. I don't think they'll run the ski. I, I just don't think they'll run the scheme. In theory, they are a very good team on paper. Miami. The Dolphins? Yes. I mean, if you've looked at, they obviously started terrible, but then they won like nine straight. The year before, they were like 10 and six, missed the playoffs by one game. They got Waddle on one end. Defense is really good. If they would have kept Brian Flores, I would have been saying this could be a wild card team, but it always comes down to Tua. And I think this is also. Almost a similar such a thing with uh, Jalen Hurts. We're giving you all this stuff, put up or shut up, or depending on what happens next year, we're going to have to be looking elsewhere. Well, the um, Dolphins' new head coach is um, Mike McDaniel. Um, he was at, in the um, Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. He was in the, with the 49ers. So if this Mike McDaniel is anything like Kyle Shanahan, he should be able to get a lot out of Tua and a lot out of Tyreek Hill. Like, Tyreek Hill can definitely play the Debo Samuel role that he played in um that Debo played last year for the 49ers. Tyreek Hill can definitely do that role in Miami if it comes down to that. And there's a lot of uh wide receivers who are still free agents. You got Jarvis, still a free agent, Julio Jones, Will Fuller, T. Y. Hilton, Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, OBJ, OBJ, Deshaun Jackson. Like there's a lot of wide receivers that are still available. I, you guys, Cowboys, you guys gave a which we'll call it to Amari Cooper to Amari, the um, yeah to the Browns yeah to the Browns yeah. So are you guys looking for any of these veteran receivers? Because I know we drafted um we drafted someone a receiver with our third round pick. He was from like South Alabama. I looked at his stats; they were pretty good. But yeah, I can definitely see the Cowboys in the market for um a receiver. I know we drafted um another tight end, Dalton Schultz. Schultz is um we franchise him. He's our good tight end. So yeah, I could definitely see us in the market if the price is right. I mean, we paid Zeke all that damn money, so I don't know how much money we got. <laughs> and then the, uh, the biggest free agent move was the Browns getting Deshaun Watson. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Russell Wilson. <laughs> he actually got traded though, so that's that, that's not a free agent move. He did get traded to Denver, but I would say the biggest move just because of obviously the situation. And the whole contract guaranteed, two hundred thirty million, and then there's only a million on the first year because they're anticipating him being suspended, which is a whole other sign that you're anticipating him being suspended. So you're only gonna have like him miss a million. Then he'll get the rest at the end. That was the biggest offseason move because now these owners are like, "What the hell are you doing, Cleveland? Guaranteeing all that money?" Because now all these quarterbacks coming. Lamar Jackson, who still hasn't had a deal done. Like, those quarterbacks, like, you got Herbert in a couple years. You got Burrow. They're going to be like, I want this guarantee type stuff. So, that was the wildest thing. Wildest. Yeah, the Browns fucked it up for everyone. Like, 
All right, I get you guys um, not thinking Baker's the answer, which well, let's talk about Baker Mayfield for a second real quick. I feel the way that the Browns did him is absolutely dirty. Oh, like, okay. like I know, I know, like, this is the NFL. It's a cutthroat business, like, all that good shit. But, like, this man Baker, like, was injured all last season. Like, you could see it on TV. It was publicized. Everyone knew about it. And this man is still playing for you, playing hurt, jeopardizing himself. Like, the Browns knew, like, if, I feel like there was one point in the season where, like, we're just going to let this dude, like, if we know that we want something better at quarterback, why are we going to let this man keep playing, just getting himself fucked up for us? Like, that was dirty. And then they just signed the Sean Watson just up under him like that, like, yeah, I think it's fucked up. And the they Browns signed him when all the other teams that needed a quarterback got quarterbacks. Like the Colts, they got Matt Ryan. Denver got Russell Wilson. Like they, it's happened before, but that was terrible on that one. Because it's also a thing, too, where he was a quarterback who actually got Cleveland wins in the past like four years. Before this, Browns were get, going over. Over, one, two. Obviously, everyone remembers that Thursday night game he came in, beat the Jets. He has a playoff win against Pittsburgh in this four-year span. And obviously, with the dysfunction that the Cleveland Browns are, because they are very dysfunctional. They didn't, they're just like, oh, yeah. And he's still on the roster. Still hasn't been traded or anything like that or just let go. They owe him $19 million. So if they don't trade him this year, he's just going to be sitting at home collecting $19 because he's not going to show up to any of the stuff. But it was wild. And then they get to Sean Watson, where when they did sign him, depending on who you are and what you believe in, it was very, this side, a lot of people didn't care. They got to Sean Watson, let's go, we're going to the Super Bowl. The other side, people are writing their letter of <laughs> resignation to the Browns, like, yeah, I ain't coming to games, I'm giving up my season tickets and all of that. And then the press conference with Deshaun was just awkward because he said he wanted to be hands-on with the community and everyone's just like, okay, let's Ugh, weird, <laughs> weird. Like, nigga, you were, ugh, like you were nasty. But obviously he's a, he's a really good quarterback and we're going to see, but I don't know the NFL. If you sit out a year, Justin, how rusty do your skills get though? Cause this isn't something where you can just sit out and plug and play. Yeah. But I mean, once you get him in the training camp and once you like get him like moving again, like he's going to, it's one of the lucky he's not missed a beat. Unfortunately, the way is the way it is. Like, I know he hasn't been. He ain't going to go to jail for anything. But like, you know, that many cases, that many women. He did something. He did something. I don't know what. I don't know what the court can prove, but he did something. Like, we all know he did something. Like, it, it, it just, it's just a little slimy to me, man. Like, it's just. It's just weird. Like the bad thing is when he does play, like the roster Cleveland has, they are a favorite yeah, to I do know. really well. Yeah, I know. Like he's going, they're going to do very well. I know. But we'll see. I don't even know if they'll be the top team in Ohio anymore. Ever that team in Cincinnati went to a Super Bowl. They got everyone back and they improved the offensive line. Yes, they did. So I, that's going to be crazy. But you did bring up Russell Wilson. Let's throw him some respect. He did get traded to Denver, which. I don't know why all the quarterbacks came to the AFC, Justin, but the AFC North, Cleveland stuff, and the AFC West are going to be the craziest divisions in the league this year. I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, the AFC West, you literally have Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, and um, Russell Wilson in the same division. One of them are not making the playoffs. Maybe two, depending on what the AFC North does. Depending yeah, on tiebreakers. It's wild. I mean, I... The schedule comes out in two weeks, so we might have to do a show about the schedule release, honestly. That's but become a whole spectacle, too, in the NFL. Everything in this damn league, bro, is crazy. <laughs> because now the Twitters are like, oh, my God, schedule release. When the Houston Texans are pumping it up because of the schedule release, I'm like, we don't, I don't think I've ever talked about y'all besides Deshaun Watson on this podcast. So I don't know why y'all are pumping your schedule up. But, <laughs> yeah, man, that's become a whole spectacle. They're like, it's NFL schedule. They're like, happy NFL schedule release day. I'm like, when did this become a thing? Yeah. Well, once I see like the, like you, you can look up and see like who the teams are playing right now, which I haven't done yet. But like, once I know like the order of like how it's going to go down, then you can like really like think about who's going to make, who's going to be making the playoffs, who's going to make the runs, all that good stuff. So it is an exciting day. 
It is, man. So, like, Russell's coming there to Denver, which ever since winning the Super Bowl, they have not made the playoffs. That's correct. They've had 10 starting quarterbacks since Peyton Manning retired. Holy shit. I know it was 10. Mm -hmm. It's been 10. 10 starting quarterbacks since Peyton's retired. And obviously, one of their GMs is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Elway. So is it like you can't pick quarterbacks? You can only trade for them? Well, this is exactly what um the Broncos needed then. This after you told me ten core ten quarterbacks since twenty fifteen, this is exactly what they needed needed for them. Because they have a good team. They drafted Devontae Williams last year. Um Jerry Judy's ready to make a leap. He has a quarterback now, so he should be able to make a leap. They had a, they traded Noah Fant in the um deal, but they still have Cortland Sutton, um, Melvin Gordon, like yeah, well, Russell Wilson, like you saw, you saw the teams that he was carrying in, in um, Seattle, and with awful lines too. So, yeah, I think um, I think Denver is definitely going to take a leap forward, but their division is just so hard. Like I don't know, I can't even say they're going to be a playoff team. But someone's getting left out. It helps though that the AFC South is trash with the Colts and the Titans, and that's about it. So the division champ will get in there. I, I don't think, think I think the Titans are going to fall off this year. Yeah. So okay. So the so Colts, so, so we have the the Colts are going outside L seven C just knocked. I'm going to tell you right now the Colts are winning the AFC South. And I feel like I feel like this type of thing is more for the schedule podcast. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Definitely. Because, but, because now I'm starting to think too. But I'll tell you right now the Colts are winning. Well, they have they Matt Ryan and they got Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. And they have Jonathan Taylor, who should have been the MVP last year. Oh, that's a whole other <laughs> debate. I agree, but it's it's crazy, too. But we talk about all the things in the AFC, a whole bunch of crazy things. There was a number 12 who came back out of retirement. Tom Brady, we talked about him retiring. And then six weeks later, he's like, I'm back. Unfinished business. And with that, too, Bruce Arians isn't even the coach anymore. Nope. So... <laughs> What did you think about Brady coming back? And obviously him coming back changes the landscape of a lot of things. Cause now you think of the bucks again, like, Oh, they can make a run. what did you think of him coming back and the bucks chances now? Yeah. With, when Brady did retire, like the, a, the NFC South was wide open. Like it could, it could have been Atlanta. It could have been um, new Orleans. Shit, it could have been Carolina, but this guy decided to, Anyway, this uh, this guy decides to come back. So, allegedly, what I've been like hearing, like hearing around the grapevine is like Tom Brady was gonna um go to the Dolphins. He was going to go to the Dolphins and be like the a player slash like owner. They're about to give Brady ownership, and th- and then once the um the Flores um lawsuit um struck down. It killed everything. So Brady was just like, oh, man, fuck it. Like, I guess I'll go back to Tampa. But, yeah, he was supposed to be in Miami. So then what? <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was going to be in Miami. And then that doesn't happen. He restructured his deal, though. This is the last year in Tampa. He'll be a free agent next year. And by the time this year is going to be kind of crazy. It's like, so who's going to want to pick up 46-year-old, 7-year-old Tom Brady in free agency? And there'll be teams lining up if he plays like he did last year. Yeah, if he replicates what he did last year, yeah, someone will definitely um, sign Tom Brady again. In, but could um, this 2023. Be, will it be Miami? If Tua doesn't play well, they're like, hey, we're signing. It could be a Jameis situation. What happened to Jameis with the uh, Tampa Bay? They're like, hey, you went 8-8 eight and eight for us. It's great, but we could sign Tom. Sorry, you got to go. You insert Tom Brady with Waddle, Tyreek Hill. That defense, he gets to play Bill twice a year, which is instant ratings, NFL standpoint. Are we are we foreseeing that already? I want to see what um Sean Payton does. Oh, let's see what Sean Payton does after this year. We'll see how Brady plays, and then we can revisit this because I think if Brady does go to another team, it will be where Sean Payton's coaching. Because I believe in that little report about you know that. Dolphins, Brady, ownership, coach. Sean Payton was supposed to be coaching the Dolphins. So it would have been Sean Payton, coach, Tom Brady, owner slash QB. Part owner slash QB. That would be freaking crazy. 
since we don't have the schedule, there is something we do know. NFL, first time, we're going to have three games on Christmas. They had success with the games last year. The Browns, the Browns freaking Green Bay game where Baker threw like four picks and they were still had a chance to win, had 48 million people watching. Ridiculous. And yeah, Browns freaking <laughs> Browns Green Bay game on Christmas. They're like, all right. And Christmas is on a Sunday this year. So they're doing three games on that Sunday. The rest are going to be like on Christmas Eve Saturday. Yeah, Christmas Eve on Saturday. So you're going to have Christmas Eve Saturday games, three games on Christmas Day Sunday, and then Monday Night Football. Man, what? If they take if they have big ratings again, Justin, they might just be like, you know what? Sorry, NBA. We're just going to take over Christmas too. I've already heard some talking heads on the radios like, hey. You just rent stuff until the NFL comes back and takes ownership. And I thought that was the wildest thing I've ever heard. I don't see um, the NFL running games on um, it every Christmas day. Like, if a Tuesday's a Christmas day, I don't see it. Wednesday's a Christmas day. But it's definitely, it's definitely in the open for, like, you know, t- days where they typically are running games for them to do it now. Like, Thursday. I could see it. Saturday last year, they they ran game Sunday this year, so yeah, I expect the NFL to do it a lot more. But if you have a Tuesday Christmas, it's going to be the NBA's day because they're going we're going to have our five games all day long. I don't think the NFL is going to be running games on a Tuesday Christmas day. It's a good thing they're on different networks since the NBA is going to have ABC and ESPN, and then the NFL has like CBS, NBC, and Fox because the NBA does run the five games. Now you gotta you gotta put good games for the NBA. Typically they schedule good games, but the NFL, I think they're gonna come with some heat on that Christmas. The NBA these NBA players don't start trying until after the All Star break anyway. Like b- basketball is not worth watching until after February. Anyway, well, so. I do have some. I do think that's gonna change next collective bargaining agreement. What in the NBA? And start playing. <laughs> ben Simmons and Kyrie messed it up for all of them. Oh, I definitely agree about Ben Simmons fucking up for everyone. That's for goddamn sure. It's over. They're going to have the Kyrie rule. They're going to have pay to play. (laughs) Yeah. But the NFL, I mean, they've been doing that their whole lives. But I feel like they're going to put on some spectacular games. And Christmas, you get three NFL games and still the five NBA games. Unless the NBA backs off, which then I'm going to call them soft. The NBA is not going to give up their day. I do not see that happening at all. Better not. They better have all the five. They're like, oh, we're just going to do three this year. Mm -mm. You better do it all, man. Justin, anything else you want to talk NFL before we sign off today? Man, I think that's it for now. Um, We've already agreed that we're probably going to do a schedule release show. So anything that I'm forgetting, we'll do it when that schedule drops. No, I think it is. I think that's a good thing. Everyone's updated. We're going to do a schedule release one, seeing how these teams in the AFC, who's going to be playing who. Cross conference wise, that's a big deal. And then, yeah, we're going to be ready to go. Justin, any, we're good. We're good. Good for the day. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Make sure you like, rate, comment, subscribe anywhere that you listen to. We're going to be back in a couple of weeks with the scheduling episode. And take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.